Welcome to PSD to HTML5 and CSS3. This video is called Coding the Content Section. In this video, we're going to be continuing from where we left off in the previous video, which was coding the header section, which you can see here. This is what we did previously. And now we're going to continue on to the content section, which is right here. So we're going to be coding the uh, header section with the leading paragraph text the three columns right here, one, two, and three, and the sidebar. So let's jump right in. In your HTML editor, you're gonna to go to your content section, and let's just give a little bit of space here. This doesn't actually affect the website. This is just for readability while you're coding um, the HTML. It's just easier to read. Okay, so first off, inside your column content section, Let's put the uh, header text and the leading paragraph text. So those would be, that would be an H3, and that was PSD to HTML5, CSS3. This right here is uh, an HTML entity. It's a good practice to, um, to do this. And what this is, is instead of just putting an ampersand, um, I put the HTML entity that creates an ampersand, which is uh, ampersand amp, semicolon and it's a good practice to do this because just leaving an ampersand could throw you some errors specifically when you're coding uh, in some other uh, programming languages um, it's just good practice to remember that um, and in Coda what's nice is if you were to highlight some text you can actually right click and then uh, go to processing and then code entities and it will encode that HTML entity for you if you don't know what it is or say for example there are different characters that won't display in the font this will actually encode it for you so uh, it's just just remember this one that's all you'll be using for now onto the paragraph text we had some lorem ipsum I'm just gonna copy it straight from the design you can also copy it straight from the PSD paste save that and let's check that out. So there it is. Next up, we have the three columns right here. So those three guys. So let's put those together. We're going to start by coding one, and then we're going to paste it two extra times because it's the same layout. Image, header, body copy. Image, header, body copy, so on and so forth. So let's add a div. Give that the class of column put a, an HTML comment saying that it's the end of the column, just so we know. Then we have an H4, I believe. Sorry, no, image. And let's reference that image. The first one was the, uh, no, puppy. .jpg, alt text. Let's be descriptive on this one. So a cute puppy looking into the camera. Then we have an H4. Okay, I'm just gonna explain what happened here. Um, in Coda, uh, it auto finishes your tags. So it'll auto complete the tags just to save typing, which is really a nice feature. But if you're typing too fast, like I just was, well, I couldn't even do it there. Uh, it It's supposed to close the tag for you. But if you're typing too fast, it might not uh, process that you just wrote this opening tag and it will try and close the previous tag that was open, which is the div. So if you see that happening uh, throughout these videos, that's what that is. I'm not actually um, meaning to do that. So H4. A cute puppy. And then we had some paragraph text and let's just copy it straight from the design. Okay. There we go. Oh, that didn't work. Paste, there we go. So that's our one column, let's give it a look. There we go, so let's copy that column paste it two more times and let's just change the content of the three columns. So if we have a look here, there's our three columns. 
but we want to change the image and the header text on both. So the first one was crazy, or the second one, crazy underscore dog. And let's give some descriptive alt text. Uh, crazy dog playing in the leaves. And this will be crazy dog. This one was a husky. Uh, cute. Well, we already did cute. Uh, beautiful husky dog staring off into the distance. So I know this might sound kind of funny, but it's actually good because we can see these images and we can see uh, what they're doing. We understand that this is a, a cute puppy looking into the camera, and this is a crazy dog playing in the leaves, and this is a beautiful husky staring off into the sun. So we can see that and we can understand, uh, and there's a lot of information in just viewing this image. But for people who may not be able to see the image uh, very well or at all, um, we still want them to be able to understand uh, what's what's there. It's a lot of information uh, that we can give them. So we can just be descriptive and we can help out by putting some alt text. So take the time, take the five or 10 seconds to actually write in descriptive alt text. It's also good for SEO. Um, when you're more descriptive. Okay, so that would be our three columns, and now we're going to move on to the sidebar. So between the aside tags, we're going to code this up here. Here will be the aside. This will be what we'll call a widget, and this will also be a widget. We have a header, another header, some content. We have a header and three uh, icons that will navigate away from the site. So let's put those in. Let's start off by putting a uh, div and give it the class of widget. We're going to use a class because we're going to have more than one widget and they're going to have the same style. So we have an h4. And this said latest news. We have an H5, and that was a date. Okay, there it is again. Do you see that? Didn't mean to do that. I was just typing too fast. There we go. H5. A date. Let's put December 31st. You can put whatever you want, but I'm just putting that. And we had a little bit of text. So I'm going to copy right from the design. Paste that in here. Save that. I'm going to have a look to see if it worked. There is what will be our sidebar or our aside. Okay, let's copy this widget, paste it below it, get rid of the paragraph and the H5. And this will say follow us. Okay, now if you look here, we have the three icons, which are images, but they are also links because they're going to navigate to a website. In this case, they'll navigate to a Twitter page, Facebook, and a YouTube page. So let's put a link. And inside that link, we have an image. And the first one was Twitter. Let's put some alt text. Follow us on Twitter. Let's copy that and paste it two more times so we don't have to write these things out again. The second one was Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. And the third one was YouTube. Follow us on YouTube. All right, so. Let's have a look there, see if it worked. There's our three icons. Right now they don't go anywhere. We want them to be able to navigate to three different websites. So let's do that. So right here, let's put the actual URL of the website. Inside the href, you can put uh, an absolute URL or a relative URL. Absolute URL is uh, what I'm putting here. I'm putting uh, an absolute, well, what's the best way to explain this? If I go to like this, twitter.com, 
uh, slash Brad Hussey. That's going to navigate to this website, to this specific page. Um, when I put a relative URL, so say for example, I wanted to navigate to um, a page on this site, I would just go about.html. We don't actually have that page, but you can see here that it doesn't actually say HTTP colon slash slash bradhussey.ca slash about.html or whatever website slash about.html because this is relative to your website uh, or the root of your website. Um, and this is absolute. Uh, if the path is just hard coded, this is exactly where you're going. Um, same with these images here. The source, this is a relative URL. I'm not actually doing this. Just say the website was bradhussey.ca slash images. So this, this will look at this absolute path. It will look at bradhussey.ca images social Facebook. It's going to look right there. That's absolutely where the, the link is. Whereas if I just do this, it's just relative to uh, where you are on the website. So it's just going to look in the images folder. It's not going to navigate away or anything. Um, okay, so in here, whoops, let's put facebook.com slash brightside studios. And in here, youtube.com slash I see 17. So I'll save that. So now these three links should navigate. You can see here at the bottom that they'll be navigating to those pages. Um, currently, if I were to click on one, it's going to navigate me away from my website, um, which I don't necessarily want if it's on a website, uh, if it's on an external website. I don't want them to just navigate away from my site, possibly forget uh, that they were here. So what I want to do is have them open in uh, new tabs or new windows. The way to do that is after your href within your a tag, your opening a tag, put target blank and that will open it in a new window or tab depending on your browser. So I'm going to paste that for the three of these. Uh, you, you wouldn't want to do this to an internal link or a link that's going to navigate to your website. Um, say in your nav bar because um, that, that would just be bad practice. You'll just be opening new windows everywhere for the same website. The reason why I'm putting this on an external link is because I don't want you to go away from my site and possibly forget that you were there. So save that, view this. Now if I were to open this, you could see it says in a new tab and boom, new tab, good. So. That is all for coding the content section. Let's just review. Here's our content. Inside the content, we have the section of the idea of column content, and then we have our uh, header and our leading text, three columns. Then we have our sidebar. And in the sidebar, we have two widgets. One widget is news. One widget is three links, uh, social links. So in the next video, we're going to be coding the secondary call to action section and the footer. In the design, it looks like this. This section right here. So we'll be coding the HTML for those sections, and then we're going to start getting into styling the site with CSS3. So I'll see you in the next video.